68 year old dude. Uh, he's got tense bullae and slothing of the skin on the chest, arms, abdomen. Okay. And the immunofluorescence shows a net like pattern. Okay. Fish net like pattern, the colloquialism. Uh, this is referring to uh, Pemphigus vulgaris. So, Pemphigus vulgaris is a type 2 hypersensitivity where the immune system makes antibodies against. Desmoglein 1 and 3, which are a protein that compose desmosomes, okay, which are uh, junctional proteins that connect adjacent cells in the epidermis. Um, desmosomes, as I said, composed of desmoglein 1 and 3. Uh, they're in different layers of the skin, but uh, the literature says they're copious in the stratum spinosum, okay, uh, just above the basement membrane. Um, but that's what you need to know for this. I mentioned in the stem here, there's no oral lesions. It's like, ooh, wow, because pemphigus vulgaris, uh, you classically get oral lesions, whereas bulls pemphigoid, not as severe. Uh, you usually do not get oral lesions. So some students seeing this are probably like, hmm, what the fuck? Why are there no oral lesions? But uh, is this really pemphigus vulgaris? Yeah, this is what you assembly will do sometimes, okay? You can't, uh, you can't hinge yourself on one little uh, detail and choose something completely uh, dissonant from what the rest of the information is telling you. So net-like pattern between the cells. Um, desmosomes connect adjacent cells in the epidermis. This gives you uh, a net-like immunofluorescent pattern. If the immunofluorescence were instead linear, that's consistent with bolus pemphigoid, which is the basement membrane, the hemidesmosomes. Okay, The hemidesmosomes are at the dermo, the dermo epidermal junction or dermal epidermal junction. Uh, that's a nice linear pattern at the basement membrane. Um, that's also a pattern you would see in, uh, good pastures as well. Okay. You get a linear immunofluorescence. So, uh, once again, desmoglein one and three, a component of desmosomes connecting adjacent cells in the epidermis, classically in the stratum spinosum, that's pemphigus vulgaris, whereas bulls pemphigoid, uh, type 2 hypersensitivity autoantibodies against, uh, collagen 17. Okay which is a component of hemidesmosomes. So collagen-17 is also known as simply bolus pemphigoid antigen, and the U.S. simile will write that sometimes. So that's hemidesmosomes connecting the, uh, the dermis to the epidermis. Now, you're probably going to look at some of these other ants. I shouldn't actually, let me just mention real quick. As I, met, as I said before, pemphigus vulgaris is worse than bolus pemphigoid. Uh, pemphigus vulgaris is classically associated not only with the oral lesions, but with positive Nikolsky sign, which is slothing of the skin with friction. So I mentioned slothing of the skin here. That's reflective of the positive Nikolsky sign. And, and that's why we have this, uh, uh, this appearance of the, the slothing of the skin here. So that's classic for pumpkin vulgaris. Slothing of the skin with friction, that's positive Nikolsky sign. Now looking at some of the other answer choices, adherence junction, uh, that is in the epidermis. And Adherent, what you need to know for U.S. simile is adherence junctions contain cadherins. So adherins contain adherence junctions contain cadherins. Sounds similar, right? So cadherins are calcium dependent proteins. That's literally what you need to know. So just adherence junctions. You say, Michael, what do I actually need to know for U.S. simile? You just say they contain cadherin proteins, which are calcium dependent. Uh, I'll just contrast that with tight junction choice E. Tight junctions are the most superficial junctions. These contain proteins called claudins and, and occludins. And tight junctions prevent solutes from moving between cells. I've seen this asked where they mention, I believe it's inflammatory bowel disease. And they, they say something about, and one of the NBMEs for step one, they say something about how uh, there's been movement of solutes between the cells and the GI tract. And they said this is most likely due to uh, failure of what? It's tight junctions, okay? Because tight junctions, as I just said, prevent the movement of solutes between cells. They contain, or they're composed of claudins and occludins, okay? Adherence junctions are slightly deeper, and they are composed of cadherins, and those cadherins are calcium dependent. Gap junctions are deeper than even adherence junctions, and they're composed of proteins called connexins. And you say, well, what's the relevance of what do I need to know for uh, gap junctions for USMLE? They want you to know that gap junctions are responsible for 
uh, elect electrical conduction and ion passage between cells. So if they ask you about how does the myocardium uh, contract in synchrony, how does the electrical activity move through the heart uh, as fast as it does, that type of question, the answer is gap junctions, okay? It allows for ions to move, allows for electrical conduction between cells. Uh, that's pretty much it, okay? We could obviously do like a long discussion on all this stuff. Um, there's plenty to talk about, but your take-home point is just uh, net-like immunofluorescence, that's Pemphigus vulgaris, that's desmosomes, desmoglein 1 and 3. Uh, in contrast, bolus pemphigoid is hemidesmosomes, that's collagen 17, and that's at the dermal-epidermal junction. That's it.